Welcome to the Dynamo Show. I am your host, James Ert, the Chief Architect of WOW for Dynamo Entrepreneur, a brand that supports experts and leaders who are living well and doing good around the world. Predominantly speakers, authors, internet marketers, coaches, people that have built small to medium sized businesses, even all the way up to national sized businesses like this gentleman we are going to talk to today. So, Michael Marmer, I welcome you to the Dynamo Show. Pleasure to be here today. Thank really you for pleasure. coming. Thanks, James. I have some friends that speak very highly of you, and this is our first time meeting, so this is great because I get to get to meet you right now. It's fantastic. So let's talk about the company, okay? okay. I want to start there because it's national, and sure. I want to kind of go backwards to kind of how your roots formed what you're doing now. Pinpoint National Photography. Let's talk about that, and we'll head in reverse. Perfect. So Pinpoint National Photography is a company I built from scratch. Uh, currently, we... Um, are based in Toronto. I'm based here. I have two account managers. We have a team overseas that does production uh, coordination and a second team uh, that does uh, photo editing. And then we have photographers across Canada. Right on. In every major city. Okay. Every major city, most smaller communities. And mm -hmm. we started working in the United States as well. Okay. Very cool. And our, our uh, clients are, we, we, we don't do wedding photography. We are Photographers for, for, for companies, for businesses. Okay, great. And for government agencies, crown mm -hmm. corporations, associations. Um, and so that's really the main thing about Pinpoint National Photography, that we are a national. And uh, we can provide photographers in every city across the country for multiple events, um, headshots, corporate events, uh, facilities, uh, product photography, anything a business needs to promote their brand. How did it start? Started as a hobby, as a hobby business. A hobby. Yeah, I mean, I paid my way through school many years ago doing photography. Okay, great. So you've been a photographer a long time. Yeah, and then... Well, analog it's, what's, what's Sorry? Analog? Yeah, film. It was all film. Uh, we didn't call it analog. It was all film, right? Yeah. And, and so, you know, I loved it. You know, a kid with a camera. Paid my way through university. Yeah. And when I got my BCom, I, I stopped shooting. Okay. okay. Got my MBA, became a certified management consultant. Yeah. And then later on in life, I got... I was looking for... Yeah, I have kids and family, you know, working. I was yes. looking for a hobby. Okay. Right? Get back into photography. Nice. Right? So uh, I joined. Back in the genre of the, the point just, and click. <laughs> just, before, just before digital, right? Okay. And so I started shooting just for pleasure. Mm -hmm. And everyone was shooting barns, bugs, and flowers. And I like shooting people. <laughs> so I, we threw up a little website. And this is an interesting point. It was, this is how early it was on the internet. I had a client who was an SEO guy. And we said, would anyone hire a photographer over the internet? We oh, didn't know. Wow. That's how early it was. Wow. Okay. So we threw up a little website, yeah. and then all hell broke loose. Okay. We started getting what inquiries. What year is this? It's kind of 2003, 2000, okay. about 2003. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. 2003, 2004. And it was never any plan for it to be anything. It was just, mm. you know, a little hobby thing. I was shooting, capture a little bit of revenue, uh, pay for the gear, right? And started. I was shooting weddings, bar mitzvahs, anniversary parties, birthday works. parties. Yeah, all social yeah, events, yeah. right? And, um, as many photographers do as they grow. And then photographers started to contact me as well. Yeah. And then we started to book them out. Okay. And before you know it, this thing was just, it was kind of took on a life of its own. Yeah. And then people around me said, why don't you turn it into a real company? 
Yeah. And I said, well, photography is great. I love photography, but I didn't want to be a full-time photographer. And you were still in the JOB doing management yeah. consulting? Oh, yeah, yeah. Still doing, okay. all, doing the consulting so doing work. Both. That, was, that was my full-time job, right? That was my full-time work, yeah. right? And so, you know, I said, no, I don't want to be a photographer. I said, no, it was a real business. So at, at some point, mm. I said, you know what? Okay, I'm going to do this. But at that point, it was a difficult decision. I said, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to put down, if I'm going to turn this into a real company, I'm putting down the camera which would be no difference if you were a house painter, Interesting. right? You know, if you were a yeah. carpet cleaning business, it doesn't matter what you are, right? If you're trying to build a business beyond yourself, right? as, as the, and that's what I wanted to so do. So what right? do you do as a hobby now? Oh my God, I don't do anything. <laughs> that's not true, that's not true. I don't think it was a hobby. You do I management got, I, consulting. No, 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 no. I, got into, I got into road cycling. I, it's what I consider a hobby, I got into road cycling. Oh good, Yeah, right with on. the Lycra and everything, yeah, you know, it's nice. like, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. a mountain biker. Are so, you, okay, yeah. so I mean, I ride, Two to four times a week. Nice. You know, ser you know, serious distance, 80 to 120 very kilometers. Good, yeah, very good. yeah. So that's yeah. I don't consider it a hobby. It's more of a sport, right? Yeah. But you like a Tour de France fan? Yeah, and, like yeah, all that kind it. of stuff. Love it. Great. Just I become nuts. You know, friends yeah. that crazy. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's what very I do. cool. So now with c building a company like this, you require an immense amount of skills. You require skills. You require core values. You require discipline. What kind of core values would you say that an entrepreneur to elevate to a position of status that you have now with this company is required? Talking about core values, it's interesting because I think a lot of it is how you treat people, mm -hmm. how you treat customers, mm -hmm. how you treat the people working with you. So true. How you treat your suppliers, mm -hmm. everyone, right? Mm -hmm. So I really firmly... The janitor. Everybody. <laughs> everybody. Every single person, yeah. no matter what they're doing, the people overseas that do work for me, I treat them extremely well. The rate they charge is lower, but I treat them with respect. I pay them on time. I pay them even when there's a problem, mm -hmm. right? And the same thing with the photographers that work for us. If there's a problem, we'll still pay them, right? We may never use them again, but we'll still pay them, right? That's treating with respect. The same with customers. Any business can, can deliver, can do any kind of work, right? But when there's a problem, how do you deal with it? And that's what I think about core values, right? That's mm -hmm. one of our core values, mm -hmm. that we will always make good if something goes wrong. And mm -hmm. in any business, service, things service, go wrong. Service. Yeah, service, yeah. service, service. And yeah. then in terms of, I don't know if you want to get into, but you know, building a national company, for me, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, I did recruitment. So mm -hmm. people say, how do you hire photographers across the country? Yeah. I haven't met them all, but I have a whole process to get that done, mm -hmm. right? And then I, in my recruitment days, I was, technology recruiter. I love technology. Okay. I, technology enables my business. Yes, it does. Right? From the website to the hosting of images to yeah. transfer. So, uh, but the core value of how you treat people, I think, both clients, suppliers, contractors, I mm -hmm. think this is critical, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you talk about problems, you know, and they're inevitable. They're going to happen. Yep. You know, and it's not a matter of, you know, reacting to it. It's about thinking about it and staying centered and being balanced in the decision around that problem. Uh, and, and guiding others, you know, to, to shine their own light around those types of problems and then pay it forward yes. with what we learn. Right. Now, have you learned anything through some of the problems that you've gone through in your life? I mean, we all climb big mountains, we all go through oceans and swim up river. You know, is there anything significant that's gone on in your life on your way to building such a big business? You know, it's interesting because there, I, I, when I reflect on it, my, I've had a good life, you know. I mean, my life is not over. I've had a successful life and usually things that I touch go well. Nice. But when I stopped doing the recruitment work, my original plan was to do consulting relating to business mediation, mm -hmm. to build a full-time practice around that. Nice. And it, I, I spent a few years, two or three years, put my family through financial hell. Okay. okay. Yeah, I okay. really did, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three kids, they were young teens, they all learned yeah, from yeah. the experience, right? Many moons ago? Yeah, well, it was like, you know, it was around the time I did the photography, yeah. So okay. it was like they were at one, and so I still do that work. Right? But I, it's not full time because I just couldn't build a full. So it was difficult. It was a difficult time. It was very stressful. I made much less money than I've been accustomed to, you know, borrowed money, you know, so it was hard. So that was a hard thing. So what I learned from that, you know, people say I have this company. Oh, look, like it looks so easy, right? Yeah. It's not easy. No. Right? It was not easy at all. No. Right. And so I had to, you know, persevere, not yeah. give up. Um, make difficult choices and keep going. Right? It's a couple not... decade overnight success. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, right? It just doesn't happen just like that, right? Yeah. So uh, not easy, but, but well, worth it, right? And it's still, yeah. you know, we're still working at it, right? It's still true. trying to grow, still trying to make it bigger, trying to make it better, to improve the processes. Especially all those like point and clickers, you know, you see all these cameras, these DSLRs coming out with the automatic setting or like, you know, the smartphone, and everybody thinks they're a photographer exactly. now, but they don't know what really goes into it. They don't understand lighting. Exactly. You know, lighting is photography. Exactly, right? and, and the lighting and light and composition, and, and, and right. being there, and 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 so 
But for us, the unique thing is, is, the, is the multiple locations. Mm -hmm. Because if a client, they may have one photographer in one city, or even they think they can do it on their own, but what happens if they have to do things in multiple cities? Plans to go to Europe? Uh, not immediately. There's a language Ooh. challenges, I think. Yeah. You know what, the United States is, is massive, and we're just dabbled in it last year, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Just slowly starting, right? right so no, no, I don't no. think so. I, I'm I, sure I, thought I can about use it. your service. Huh. I'll be heading into uh, Halifax, Montreal, Toronto, Calgary, Winnipeg and Vancouver with a ranch project for at-risk kids. And we'll really? be trying to capture the essence of kids in ah. the gutter, shooting up heroin, uh, wow. getting arrested, you know, being bullied, getting involved with gangs. So maybe we can talk a little bit love about to. that. Just love so on to. a final note, let's say somebody's getting into photography. What would be three tips you would give the audience? Somebody who's getting photography and wants to start a business, because I get asked this all the time, I'd say, don't quit your day job. Don't quit your day job. Start doing assignments through your own particular network of friends and family. Get paid get the, and have the right to use those images um, for your own portfolio. And then as you're making enough money to, to, uh, to live, then you can think about le leaving your full-time job. Michael Marmer, high five for you, my Thank friend. You. Thank you very much. Thank you so much pleasure. for coming. Uh, pleasure. All the best with your, with you. your business. I Thank think you. it's great with what you're doing. And we'll have to thank Howard for the connection. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure being here. You're welcome. My name is James Ert. This is the Dynamo Show. We're off to a short commercial break and we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Dynamo Show. I am your host, James Art, the Chief Architect of WOW for Dynamo Entrepreneur. We are interviewing empowering people. We are interviewing people that are lighting up the world. And I have one of them here today, a photographer friend of mine that does so much more, Milena Gachesha. Yeah. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. I am such a fan. First off, a fan of your photography work, Thank and that's you. what first kind of connected me to you. And then we just kind of started you know, meeting up at different events like Archangel yeah. Giovanni's event and stuff. Yeah. You know, tell us a little bit about you. Okay. We actually met here for the first time, if you remember that, yeah. a couple of years ago. Yeah, so a couple years ago. So it's exciting to kind of bring that's you right. back here. That's right. So a little bit about me. Um, how far back do you want to go? Childhood? Let's, let's go way back. <laughs> way let's, back. Let's talk about okay. the struggles. Okay, okay. So uh, first what I want to say is, you know, as a child, mm -hmm. um, I was always creative, right? So um, I actually, in school, I would make little jewelry. So I would take staples and I would kind of staple them together, like hook them in. Yeah. And then I would take nail polish and then paint it and then yeah. make bracelets. Okay. And then the other kids were like, oh, can you make me a bracelet? And I'm like, sure. So it's, it's creativity was always something that was in me. I was like making things. So mm -hmm. photography was just Is this natural. one of your pieces? I think that's absolutely beautiful. No, not quite, but. Uh, I but, love jewelry. Yeah, I, I just, love jewelry. I absolutely love it. And yeah, I noticed your jewelry as well. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. Really Really nice. Thank you. Yeah, so with the with the struggles you were um, saying with um, photography, you know, honestly, it was like when I got out of school, I actually mm -hmm. went to Humber College for okay, creative great photography. Great school. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, you know, they didn't really teach you how to start a business, right? No. They taught you lighting, they taught you techniques yeah. and things like that. They actually taught you at the time um, black and white photography I and remember. like developing pictures. Film. Yeah, and film. The dark room. I did film, right? Oh, good. So I'm aging myself a little bit here, but uh, all good, that's what it was then. Yeah. And uh, so what we did was. Um, you know, we just kind of like finished the program and I couldn't really find a full-time job being a photographer. So I started working for a camera store. Okay. And, uh, you know, I did that for about two years and I was kind of moving up. So I was, you know, supervisor and manager in training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then one day, it was right before the Christmas rush, I was going, what am I doing? Mm. This isn't what I signed up for. This isn't what I went to school for. I wanted yeah. to be a photographer. So I just kind of decided to quit. That was it. <laughs> yep. And Jump off say, the cliff, grow wings on the way down. They say don't do that, but that's exactly what I did. Good and uh, I took Likewise. all the money. Did you? Yeah. Awesome. I, I love it. You know, you just kind of figure it out on the way, right? It is so exciting yeah. and it's, it's, you're, you're nervous. Alive. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. It is. Um, so with that, so I just took all the money and I invested it into yeah. marketing and, you know, getting a studio and things mm. like that. And within the first year, I was making a profit. Good so, and I think it was just because of the massive action, right? Mm. With a lot of um, entrepreneurs. Maybe a little bit of, to do with how good your work is. Th that is you well. have a natural eye. You know, <laughs> you can't you. deny that. I know you're very humble Thank about you. that. It's just, I'm going to brag Aww. for you. She has great work. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, no, it was really about the massive action because you could be the greatest artist, but if nobody knows about you, um, you can't build a business. So are you a good marketer? I believe I am. A good brand developer? Yes, absolutely. Um, and actually, that's my passion. Um, yeah. I work with entrepreneurs to help build their brand cool. um, through images because nice. you'll notice, uh, you know, anybody that you look up to, you know, a lot of people mention Marie for Leo or Brendan Bouchard or Tony Robbins, mm -hmm. and they all have amazing brands and yeah. they have professional images that send their message, right? Yeah. So Marie for Leo, who's always, you know, very dressed up, but she's kind of quirky and her yeah. hair is always done. And then there's Brendan Bouchard, who's, you know, very black and white with his white boards and everything yeah, that's yeah, his brand yeah. and then there's Tony who's like this you know powerful figure and you know a lot of pictures that you see of him are him on the microphone you know so everybody has their own message what about the James brand. Earp brand and the Dynamo Earp yes Dynamo Earp brand the Dynamo Absolutely. Entrepreneur brand yes and you know I remember <laughs> when you actually created that brand as well and you first announced it with the video yeah. intro and everything and so you have the blue and the silver and you know it really represents who you are because there's a shield and there's wings so it represents strength and all also a lightness and a spiritual aspect of it as yes. well, right? Yes, so that's yes. who you are. So when yeah. I think of James, you know, I think of your brand and just Thank the way you. you speak and you're always high energy, you're always positive. Um, so that's your brand and that's important and that's why you've been able to be successful. Thank you for that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Allows me to interview wonderful people like yourself. So what's Thank next you. for Milena? So what's next is, you know, um, like before, uh, for the last uh, 14 years, I was doing a lot of, you know, uh, portraits and wedding mm -hmm. photography and things like that. But what I really realized, you know, I photographed uh, people like Gary Vaynerchuk and Tim Ferriss. And, you know, you I shot loved, Gary V? Yeah. Well, you, you, at the uh, Archangel event. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you know all about yeah. my Gary V 50K donation. Totally. How Absolutely. cool is that, eh? Yes. You know, for the Reviver Ranch. Yeah. He was actually the first to offer $50,000 to our project. That's awesome. So he kind of committed so awesome. me. Yeah, you know, he's like, put your money where your mouth is. Like, open exactly. this puppy up, and it was the universe saying, "Hey, you're on point." Yeah, right. And that's what people need, and that's kind of um, it's about surrounding yourself with the right people. That's right. Right, and 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 doing something that's uncomfortable, and mm -hmm. then when Gary Vee gives you that money, it's like, yeah, you have to do something with it. You know what was cool? It sparked yeah. four other individuals. Mm -hmm. Within an hour, I received another sixty-one thousand five hundred dollars towards the ranch to support wow. the at-risk kids. So five individuals so in great. one hour. That and I didn't even great. ask. It was like the universe right. putting me there saying, hey, this is time. Absolutely. It's ripe. It's yeah. ready to go. All the stars have aligned. Yeah. And, you know, when preparation meets good timing, success yeah. happens. And you were consistent with your brand because I saw you on that microphone and you were yourself, right? So you're always consistent. I never see you kind of down or, you know, negative or anything. You were on that mic and you were sharing from your heart what you're up to with the school and with helping at-risk youth. And, you know, it just resonates with people. Now, you saw that consistency, but yes. Gary didn't know me from a hole in the right. ground. So right. what did Gary see in a matter of three minutes to um, donate 50 grand to somebody that he doesn't know? Yeah, he saw your passion. Really? Yeah, he saw your authenticity and your passion. Thank you. Yes, and I think that's what's important for entrepreneurs to know. You can't fake it. You no. know, some people say fake it till you make it. You cannot fake it. No. You have to be who you are and you are have you to be Are you faking this authentic happiness right absolutely now? Absolutely not. I am so <laughs> thrilled to be here. I see I'm it. absolutely thrilled to I be here. I feel it. Very good, yeah. very good, very good. So I know photography is a big part of your, your, your business and your past life. Yeah. And, you know, where, where is Melina going now with business? Because I know you're yeah. so much more than just photography. Yes. So what I do now is I help coaches, authors, speakers, real estate agents build their brand, mm. right? Because it's so hard to stand out um, in the crowd. Um, you know, as a photographer, it was hard, you know, being a wedding photographer, there's thousands of wedding photographers yeah, in Toronto alone, yeah. right? So I knew I had to rebrand my entire business. I knew I wanted to stay in photography, but I wanted to do something that nobody else was doing in the city. So that's why I started Ferry and Fisherman Photography. I love it, yeah. I love it, yeah, such a great yeah. project. So what that is, is um, I actually have a studio where I set it up like an enchanted forest and mm. we have um, you know, a pond and a, a mushroom and the whole forest uh, backdrop and we dress up uh, children like fairy tale characters, so fairies and nice. fishermen. Yeah. And then we photograph them and then once the photo's done, uh, we actually digitally paint it so it looks like a real fairy tale. Nice. And so nobody else was All doing that. All fantasy-like. Yes, and Very I know you cool. saw it and you mentioned yeah, that. Yeah, uh, yeah, my stepdaughter is like dying to meet you. Yes, oh, you awesome. Know? So yeah. we'll have to get her yeah. all dressed. Uh, dressed up one day. Now she's yeah. 11. That's okay. Is that okay? I actually did it. What about me? I'm 44. <laughs> Uh, can I, I be don't a know, fisherman we'll talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did it with uh, my business coach. I'll when sit that on project. the mushroom. Woo! 
<laughs> if you want, whatever works. I don't know if it would be consistent with your brand, but uh, if uh, if that's something that you want to do with your stepdaughter, that would be that would be great. Cool, cool, cool. So on a final note, yeah. let's talk a little bit about core values. Okay? okay. If you were to share with our audience a little bit about the core values that makes you who you are as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. what would you share? What kind of guidance would you give them? Okay. So, you know, for entrepreneurs, I think that branding is very important. Um, so when I rebranded or every time I rebrand myself, I notice a massive difference in, you know, the people that are attracted to me. And so right now, you know, even though I was working with children and weddings and things like that, um, right now I'm working with entrepreneurs and coaches. And what I do for them is I rebrand uh, who they are. So branding is who people see you as and the emotional attachment that they have to you. So mm -hmm. um, just an emotional reaction. So if you're um, brand right now online is you know you taking a bunch of selfies of yourself you know that sends a message but when you have professional quality photos of representing who you are in your highest light um, it sends a completely different message out there so that's exactly what I do for entrepreneurs authors speakers uh, real estate agents and so we develop a marketing campaign around that uh, for social media and their website um, so what 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 that looks like is you know we do a full half day shoot I mm -hmm. sit down with you I figure out what it is that you want to portray and then we actually um, take the photos and then we work to figure out which photos are best and we can add captions to them and things like that because we're a vi really visual based society yes. so my biggest message to entrepreneurs is build your brand and be consistent and develop a following because I was actually just talking to somebody backstage and he was saying that there's a huge difference with the pictures that he takes himself versus the pictures that are professionally taken um, so it's like a huge huge uh, increase he sees with life and engagement and everything. How like do they that. get a hold of you? Quickly. Yep. So um, my website is mkgphoto.com or they can add me on Facebook, uh, Milena K. Gakesa. I love it, yes. Milena. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having this me. is the Dynamo Show. I am James Erd, and we will be back right after this short commercial break. Welcome back to episode number 23 of the Dynamo Show. I am your host, James Earth, the Chief Architect of WOW for Dynamo Entrepreneur, a brand that supports entrepreneurs in living well and doing good, taking that oxygen mask not only on themselves, but giving it to the world, giving it to the community, empowering those leaders, those wannabe leaders, those people that are in the job that want to break free and they want to become either part-time entrepreneurs or full-time entrepreneurs like myself. Beyond that, we also have people that are inspiring through sport. And we have one of them here today. He's actually a Paralympian. His name is Kevin Rempel. What's up, man? The bronze medalist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am so empowered by your story. I, I know we're going to get into you know, a little bit about the business side of what you do, but let's take it back because you have such a powerful story and I'm just going to turn it over to you. Why don't you start at the beginning and take us through the journey that kind of got you to the business side and then after the commercial break we'll get into business. Sure thing. Uh, perhaps like you, I never imagined I would be in this position today. And I just was, uh, as a normal kid, um, played hockey, but uh, end up dislike. I end up getting kind of bitter about it, so I quit. Got into motocross, and my dream was being a freestyle motocross rider, like in the X oh, Games. That was one of my dreams, believe it or not. It was like one of the only extreme sports that I didn't get into. Yeah, well, like, you, but you mentioned snowboard and yeah. BMX and skateboarding. Yeah, yeah so all just of like it. you, I just wanted to bust myself. Well, didn't want to bust myself up, but you the adrenaline did. rush was there, yes. and that's what you're addicted to. You are, yeah, yeah. The high of the adrenaline. Yeah, and yeah. the wow factor. I love the wow, wow factor. factor. In fact, we're, uh, speaking of that, I'll, we'll get to that because I find the wow factor that I was getting from extreme sports is what I get now, the adrenaline rush in entrepreneurship. Oh, wow. So I'm skipping wow. ahead a little bit here. But so there's some synergies. Yeah, I find there's a lot like that nowadays. Right? Yeah, so you got into motocross. Yeah, and just simply uh, wanted to do my thing. I was on a job site, Brick Lane. Saw so many guys saying, when I was your age, I could have done that. There's a wish it, I wish I would have, I could have, I should have. Yes. And they passed up. And I was like, I don't want to be that. So quit my job, started my bike company to put on my own shows, did that, uh, ran my first jump show, went really well. Two weeks later, I had another event, crashed, broke my back, pelvis, and ribs, and was paralyzed. Ouch. How yeah. far back are we going? 
Uh, it's ten, been 10 years now. Okay. Yeah, so it was July of 2006. How young are you now? You mind sharing? 34. 34, okay. Yeah. 24 year old man. 23 technically, I hadn't had my birthday. Yeah. So I was 23, never supposed to walk. Um, fractured and dislocated my vertebrae. And fortunately I didn't sever my spinal cord, so surgery, realigning it, and then months and months of the bruising and swelling to dissipate from the area. After six weeks of staring at my toe, I finally got one toe to move. And then a week later, I got another toe to move. So that was the beginning of my process, learning to walk again. Walking and riding in a year, exactly to the day. Actually, I was gonna ask you that. You know, you're lying in the hospital bed. You get to the hospital. What's your first thought? I get asked this kind of questions a lot. Uh, <laughs> this is key. I accepted my injury before I got injured. So, ah, interestingly. So yeah, so I wasn't maybe super- Maybe manifested it. I wasn't super bitter but uh, I knew that that was a possibility. So I, obviously it was like devastating and I was concerned about my life, mm. but it wasn't like bawling my eyes out because mm. I knew that could happen. Yeah. And, and so- You're ready for it. You're mentally and physically, emotionally prepared. Yeah, and so in a recent interview, another interview I just did, one of the questions was like, where do you get your resilience from? Or where did that develop? And Joe Rogan, yeah, uh, he yeah. has this Good video. Time. Have you seen the video of him with on it? Like the yeah, yeah, yeah. Pro yeah, okay. his new line. And so he did the video. Is like be the hero of your own movie. That's right. And that clicked with me because I, I feel like what I did was I did that subconsciously for years. Yeah. So as a you would get this again as a, as riders, how many how many skateboard BMX motocrossers made comeback videos or even any athlete in general, and that's what it was. They're the hero of their own movie. Yeah. So when I got injured. I'm laying on the ground, couldn't move, and my buddy actually did, was there on site filming. And he comes over, so I'm laying on the ground in the feeble position, like, excruciating pain. My buddy Chris, he's above me, comes down, he's like, hey Kev, man, you all right? And he grabs my hand, and I'm like, I'm, doing, I'm like, thank you, brother. He's like, I love you. I'm like, I love you too. I'm like, Chris, you better be filming this, ah. was my very next words. No. And he steps back and he hits record on the, on the camcorder again to restart the film. Yeah, yeah, To yeah. capture me on the stretcher getting the loaded into journey. Because I'm like, in my head, I'm like, yeah, I'm totally ruined right yeah, now on yeah, the ground. Yeah. But I wanted to make that comeback video from the second I got hurt. Yeah, yeah, Because I, I just believed I could yeah, yeah. do it. Anyways. I mean, that was my thought. I mean, I was in a snowboard half pipe competition, you know. And back in the day when I started, 91, 92, when it was still called snurfing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> snow surfing. You know, I was one of the pioneers of the sport back in London, Ontario, where I'm from at the Bowler Bump. You know, I was actually the very first snowboarder ever. But then I evolved with the sport a little bit. And as it started getting more technical, I was a big air guy. I love big air, right? Big lofty air. Yeah, yeah. And at the time, they outlawed backflips, right? So you couldn't do backflips or frontflips, any inverted aerials. And so I'm in the competition. It was a lot back. In the competition. <laughs> and and uh, I didn't do it during the, the competition, but as, as I passed the line of where, you know, the marking was over, I decided to do one for the audience. I over-rotated. I hit the, the ice coping, and the hit coping hit my tailbone, and there I am lying there. And all I could think about was, man, I'm going to miss a day of riding. I missed a year of riding. <laughs> I missed a year of riding. That was my only thought. I was like, when Dude, can I get I back on my you board? Know, that's like, when can I get back on my board? <laughs> yeah, that was so, it. That's you know, totally. It's like when you're, life, when you're uh, addicted to that yeah. adrenaline rush of the extreme sports, which I love because it's the most alive you can be. Yeah. Because you need to be on. When you're in the air on a bike or, or, or on a skateboard or, or, or even windsurfing on big waves or surfing big waves, you better be on because yeah. your life's in jeopardy. Yeah. And when you glide out of that or nail it or, or, or plant that trick you know, or evolve into a new trick, you know, the, the feeling of satisfaction that you did that with your human body. You know, but now the stuff they're doing is like mental. Like these oh. motocross riders, like you watch these guys, like the metal militia. Yeah, Woo! yeah. Wow, yeah. crazy stuff. Oh yeah, and and well, I when we're done here today, I want to hear the rest of your story too. Yeah, just like for sure, I can picture. Well, I was riding, you know, early two thousands when I got into freestyle, like oh yeah. two. But you're talking even perhaps earlier, yeah. way back further, yeah, like forty four. Just I got a decade on you. Right on, yeah. yeah. But what um, BMX Plus magazines or Ride yeah. BMX magazine, like when it was super old school and they're still inventing tricks like so quickly because the there's so much room for the growth of the sport. Yeah, it's weird though. Like the kids, they bounce, you know, they, 
that's that's the one thing I'm jealous of them for is like you know they bounce they get up and you know now it's like us we break <laughs> you know <laughs> it's like you know I'm looking actually to get getting into skydiving because it's it's low impact while you're in the air as long as you time your landing right you know so that's my next big sport I got one more spinal surgery coming up after my first two uh, failed attempts and uh, this time I'm gonna nail it I'm gonna get you know back into jumping out of planes again and and hopefully snowboard racing if I can't go high I'm gonna go fast right. Uh, well, it's funny, uh, speaking about racing and like how it's different today, as ramps have evolved and people yeah. learn more about the transitions, it becomes safer to do bigger things. So mm -hmm. like you look at the, nitro, have you ever seen the Nitro World Games? Nitro, I haven't. I watch a lot of X Games. So like Travis Pastrana created the Nitro Circus and the Nitro World Games mm -hmm. where they built these massive ramps and guys are doing like triple backflips on a dirt bike. Yeah. And it's, how is that possible? Well, look at the transition. They shoot them straight up, and the way they come straight down is it's such a steep ramp mm -hmm. that if you do screw up, it's still a total risk of dying. Mm -hmm. But there's a smoother transition to ride out versus when you look at Evil Knievel jumping Caesar's Fountain, yep. he had like a wedge ramp. It was like this, mm -hmm. then this, mm -hmm. and then he landed that, and then that. So, and they did it on three inches of suspension. So now we have like a nice arc to throw you in a nice loop and then come on a nice transition down. Yeah, yeah, it's and evolved. It's just way more, yeah. it's more the possible. science behind it. Science meets art meets preparation, you know, and these kids now, they're benefiting from the pioneers that have crashed oh, and yeah, burned. Oh, yeah, totally. You know, and have learned the hard way. You know, but what's really cool, and when you relate it to, to entrepreneurship, um, it, it's, it's kind of the same thing. You're getting that rush. You're getting that thrill of, of trying something new and going into uncharted waters, you know, surfing in the powder snow. Snow, you know, or snowboarding in the powder snow and, and trying new things. Yeah. So when we come back, I'd love to actually share a little bit about sledge hockey because I know you've, you know, taken it up and it's interesting. Like, would you have done sledge hockey, you know, if that hadn't have happened to you? No, you may not. You may not have even played hockey to begin with again. But here you are and you're one of the, the, the leaders of the sport, especially in Canada. And we're going to talk a little bit about that and maybe show our audience your medal. For sure. Okay. Yep. So okay. we'll see you after the commercial break. My name is James Erd. This is the Dynamo Show. And as you can see, we have some really great guests. And stay tuned because we're going to show Kevin's bronze medal from the Paralympics. Welcome back to the Dynamo Show. This is episode 23 and we are on set with Mr. Kevin Rempel, the Canadian Paralympic medalist. Would you mind showing our <laughs> audience your medal? You know, For I sure. asked you to bring it along today and it looks heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah this is it. This is, uh, let me wow. see if I can Sochi, get it up right here. Sochi, so, 2014. Yeah, bronze medal from Sochi in the Paralympics. It's really heavy. Have Isn't you ever had awesome? a chance to like, I have never. Thank you. Whoa! <laughs> Whew. You can throw wow. it on if you want. Like, it's just Goodness fun, like sharing me. with everyone because Goodness me. you never Look know when that. anyone that yeah, gets yeah, to put yeah. it on, they just feel like the inspiration that if what you think, mom, <laughs> <laughs> totally. Isn't that great? Yeah, very that's cool. The, that's, sharing it's like one of the best parts. I love it. I love it. Let's go in reverse. Let's talk about you know winning this. And how did you get there? And you know, obviously, it's not just you. There's a team of people around you that you know support each of us as we go on this journey, you know, maybe share a little bit about that too. Yeah, so where we, where we left off, we were just talking about my injury, uh, but there's a kicker to my story, is that my dad was also paralyzed four years before I was. Come on, for real. So we were out deer hunting building a tree stand when one of the branches he was standing on broke and he fell two stories to the ground. Oh no. So my dad was a year from retirement, became a complete paraplegic, meaning like he wow. did sever his spinal cord. So mom had both father and son in wheelchairs within four years. Come on, wow. Then wow. during my one year recovery, like I said, in one year to the day I got back on the bike and went riding again, big celebration. Mm -hmm. But during that one year, my mom left my dad from his depression and a gambling addiction. The gambling was the big problem. Mm. My sister and I, my grandmother supported mom in the, her decision to leave my dad. Okay. And seven weeks later, he took his own life. Oh man, I'm so sorry to hear that. So it was a pretty gnarly time, five years, Every day, meals on the table, family dinners, roof over our head, um, dad getting injured, pursued my dream, bike rider, getting 
injured myself, learning how to walk again, and then dad getting, or like taking his life, and then what do I do? So I was looking for somewhere to get involved and direct my energy and found wheelchair basketball, but mm -hmm. I wasn't a basketball kid. Mm -hmm. um, was at the event, uh, mm -hmm. met another guy. He's like, have you ever tried sledge hockey? Mm -hmm. I was like, no, what's sledge hockey? He goes, oh, it's real sick. You get to hit people with disabilities. Ah. I was like, what are you talking about, dude? I'm like, that sounds so yeah, wrong. Yeah. And then I also follow it up with like, where do I sign up? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he's like, no, it's wicked. Like, you know, uh, we play with people who have um, cerebral palsy or spina bifida. All kinds. Amputees yeah. and spinal cord injuries. Yeah. Get on the ice and it was like putting on the motocross gear. Wild. And, uh, adrenaline that, rush. Yeah, adrenaline rush for sure. It's fast paced. And mm -hmm. then I found out Team Canada existed. Got mm -hmm. sent a YouTube video from them winning gold in 2006 in Toronto. a lot of publicity on TV and stuff too. Yeah, it's always growing. Um, Vancouver Olympics at that time were coming up. Mm -hmm. And I said, I want to make Team Canada. Yeah. So worked my butt off. Didn't join him. I joined the year after Vancouver. Mm -hmm. Played... Uh, five years in total yep. but up to sochi we won the world yep. championships in 2013 uh bronze medal in the paralympics in sochi and i'm very proud of that accomplishment for sure and it was a, a great team effort to make that happen i love it i love it now i know channeling your energy in a different way into writing is also something that you're very passionate about care to share about your new book project yeah uh in short uh, all those motocross things are coming back around so I wanted to get press passes, or I wanted to get passes to go to events that I couldn't afford to go to. Wow. So I volunteered as a journalist to do to write motocross articles, yeah. and that turned into well. After all the story that I had, I thought I could write a book. I wanted to write a book, so uh, self-published my autobiography here oh, just recently. Nice. This is uh, still yeah, standing. Yeah. When you have every reason to give up, keep going. Very cool. Hey, is that a V rod? It is a V-Rod, actually. A, that's a V-Rod Night Edition. Yes, Night it is. Rod. I'm actually on my way to buying that. No way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was actually debating between the Suzuki M109R and that. That's wicked. Right? They're so good for burnouts. Yeah. Is that okay being a chain-driven uh, bike? On that's your belt. Spine? Is that belt? belt? Yeah. Or chain? Okay. Because I know the, the, the Suzuki. Suzuki was belt-driven, and somebody told me that was chain-driven and probably to stay away from that. So I don't even have my bike license, dude, right? Because I knew it was going to be like, you know, an addiction, another addiction that could possibly kill me. So I was like, all right, I'll start with cruisers, you know? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah the, but you're still riding. I actually saw I the photos. I want to fix your ribbon. Hold on. Your medal's not. I, I, if I, you're wearing the medal, you got to represent it. Hold on. Take this off. Yeah, here we go. I don't know if it, you do this on the shore. People are dressing you and all that. But Yeah, no, that's <laughs> great. I've there never been know. dressed in a social you got it, before, though. Now, that, now it display, it's meant to display yeah, that, like, that's with awesome. the ribbon the right way. Woo-wee! <laughs> Thank you. How's it go with my hair? Beautiful. Nice. Yeah. Nice. The nice. reflection Same off kind the of metal. Shine. Yeah, the shine. Uh, <laughs> right on. Right on. So I mean, you're riding a lot still now, and you know, you're you're you're, you're on a Harley. You know, I've seen the yeah, photos still, on Facebook. I still ride as much as I can. Yeah. Uh, but the the life has changed so much. So like mm -hmm. I said, never planned to be here. Um, published a book, which is great, and now the corporate team building is where I'm focusing all my attention. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the business that you're in now. Yeah. So. While I was playing in sport, I saw a massive gap. Um, mm -hmm. People, so two cases in particular, audience members at my speaking engagements would say, how can I play? Or parents would be with their children waiting as we get off the ice and say, we want to try it. And I had no answer. So I decided- Do they to, have to have an ailment? Or like, is, is there like a prerequisite to be challenged? At the national level, you do need it yeah. to meet criteria gotcha. of a disab certain disability, like it's a point system. Okay. Um, but at the house league level, a lot of club teams thrive on having parents play with their children or nice. friends and family cool join. That? Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's pretty so cool. I just saw this massive gap in the that people want to play. Yeah. And then I saw the benefits about educating people about disabilities, diversity and inclusion. Yeah. So I created the sledge hockey experience. Nice. And the sledge hockey experience, uh, the focus is I want to give you a team Canada experience. What does that look like? As an athlete, we would take a team bus from the hotel to the rink. Mm -hmm. So I'll pick your staff up from your office. We'll bring you to the rink. And when you walk in, it's going to be customized like every player would at Team Canada level. Oh, well, wow. With your name and number and your company logo on it, a custom floor mat, custom jersey, custom name bar above your stall, co-branded signage, co-branded pucks. We'll film and videotape the whole day. I'll do a speech in the dressing room ahead of time. We'll personalize every autograph of your book and my autograph cards. We'll bring you on the ice, drills, nice. skills, and instruction, and we'll play a game. When you come off, there's going to be another banner co-branded for post-game interviews, like a real hockey player would have. Yeah. We'll do a debrief. After the event, you get photos and videos of the whole experience. Plus, check this out. 
every employee is going to get their own deck of hockey cards. No way. So you have your own personal no set way. of trading cards <laughs> to share with everyone that was in the office, oh your family, goodness. your friends, and on the back is a roster of everyone that was there that day. Oh my goodness. What a great experience. So it's very unique. It doesn't now, exist. Do you, do, do you buy it as a package? Do you buy it as a team? Can you, can you be an individual that wants to be part of somebody else's team to get part of this experience? How does it work? Yeah, it's designed for ideally 10 to 20 people. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have three different packages available right now, depending on how customized you want to go. Mm -hmm. And I'm mobile. So the, another big key is that I, I live in Toronto, based out of the GTA, but if you are in Windsor, Barrie, or Ottawa, I can bring it to you. We'll just pick a rink near your office. Wow, wow. how long have you been doing this? Uh, I, three years in the making, February, two feet in, uh, launched public about less than two months ago. I've just been writing the business plan and got it off the ground now. So what's next for Kevin? Uh, working on bookings for 2017, but I'm just so passionate about building this. I want the sport to be better for the next generation. Mm -hmm. I want to educate people about these important issues why having an employee with a disability is actually more of a benefit than a disadvantage that many people might perceive it is. Mm -hmm. I want to educate them about the sport. I want the sport to grow so that five years from now, 10 years from now, the next generation of athletes has opportunities for sponsorships that I didn't have. So let's do this. With the last minute that we have, kindly share with our audience, not about sport, about entrepreneurship and those that are disabled out there that are challenged, that are watching this show today, what would you say to them to get into the entrepreneurial space and why? I know exactly. Everyone has their own unique gift and you have to listen truly to your heart and what that is. And it might be, for me, I find expressing myself, sharing my stories, being vulnerable is one of those things. But maybe for you, it's, uh, it could be art, it could be drawing, it could be graphic design, it could be um, connecting people. That's a talent that only certain people have. I don't have that talent. So regardless of what the challenges you have in front of you or the life that you're living, listen to yourself, be true to yourself and find out what that unique gift is because each of us have something to offer the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's wild because some of it can come through the experiences. Like you didn't plan to sit here. I didn't plan no. to sit here. You know, all of these things have shaped us as individuals. And re just I'm sure you've heard this before, but remember that life is not happening to you. Life is happening for you. And when you start to see that the obstacles that you're overcoming or faced to overcome in life, are actually working into your advantage. You just have to not give up and keep going forward. I love it. Kevin Rempel, thank you so much for coming. It's an honor to have you on the show. It's an honor for you to wear my medal for the whole show too. I love <laughs> it, I love it. I'm not taking it off. I like know? it. No, it's great. You know? no, 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 I really I, love I, I, I just, I just want to show them one more time. <laughs> this is James Earl. This is the Dynamo Show. You know, reach for your dreams, everyone. Get empowered by some of the things that our <laughs> guests have shared with us today. And we will see you on episode number 24. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.